Of course, as soon as I start filming, they have to cut stone or something. I don't know what they're doing out there. That's annoying. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my June wrap-up for 2023 part 2 out of 2. I read a total of 12 books this month, so these are the final 6 books that I read if you are interested in the first 6 that I read. Part 1 is up on my channel already, so you guys can check those out, but without further ado, let us get started. So this wrap-up is actually going to have two 5-star reviews, one 4.5, and then three 4-star reviews. So actually all of these reads I enjoyed quite a bit. The first one that I have is Ever Since. This is by Elena Bruces, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I really loved it. This follows a teenager named Virginia who hears the gossip about her. Rumors follow her everywhere about how easy and promiscuous she is, so she plays into that a little bit. When her best friend Poppy unexpectedly goes away for the summer, she begins to hang out with Poppy's boyfriend, Rumi. Breaking her norm, she does not sleep with him out of respect for Poppy, but as they spend more time together, she realizes that she may be falling in love with him. As she grows closer with Rumi, she also grows closer with his little sister, Lyra, who ends up telling her about a special friend that she has. As Lyra continues to confide in Virginia, she becomes a little bit uncomfortable because the details about this special friend are a little bit too relatable. Like I said, I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars. This book is so intense and heartbreaking. It covers some very difficult topics such as suicidal ideation, grooming, sexual abuse, as well as addiction. The trauma that Virginia goes through as a child and has to end up reliving in order to help Lyra is heartbreaking and very difficult to read. I know that Virginia is meant to be an unlikable character, but I could not help but want to comfort and hug her at all times throughout this book. She just felt like such a real human, and it was really hard to watch her turn to alcohol and sex as a coping mechanism for what happened to her when she was younger. I really liked how this book showed that sexual abuse not only affects the individual it is happening to, but also everybody around them, and how those effects last throughout the entire lifetime. I also really liked how it ended on a much more hopeful note than what we started with. This is apparently the author's debut novel, which it does not feel like at all. I'm definitely interested in reading more from this author, and I ended up giving it a 5 out of 5 stars. I definitely recommend, but definitely be aware of the subject matter, because it's a heavy one. Next up, I have another five-star read. This one's a lot less heavy, but it is Her Good Side by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This one follows 16-year-old Bethany Green, who has never had a boyfriend, let alone been kissed by anybody. When Bethany is turned down by her crush when she invites him to homecoming and all of her backup plans also become dead ends, she reluctantly agrees to attend the dance with her best friend's new boyfriend, Jacob. When Sailor ends up breaking up with Jacob very unexpectedly, he starts to question if maybe there's something wrong with him. So Bethany and Jacob decide to hatch a plan with each other to date each other in order to gain some experience, but as they spend more time together, they start to realize that maybe their feelings aren't as fake as they thought, and it's the story of that. I loved this way more than I thought I would. It gave me such good vibes while I was reading this story. Like, I was just giddy. This was told in dual point of view between Bethany and Jacob, and I really liked how we got to be inside both of the characters' heads. I think that they had a lot of development go on, not only together as a couple, but individually as well. I really liked how they both learned to speak up for themselves and what they actually wanted instead of just going for whatever people thought they should want. I personally am a sucker for the fake dating trope, so I was definitely intrigued to see how this was going to play out in the end. This was definitely a slow burn romance since Jacob is dating Sailor for the majority of the book, but I really loved how they began as friends and it slowly grew into something bigger than that. I really liked the banter between these two characters. I just thought they were the cutest thing ever. I also loved how supportive they were of each other. They really pushed each other to go for their dreams. Also, 
big fan of Bethany's moms. I thought they were so cool and I loved how supportive they were of her. I also really liked how Bethany was a plus size character and it was something that was celebrated and she was never ashamed of her curviness. She refused to let people shame her for her size and her love for food and I really liked seeing that. I'm definitely interested in reading more Rebecca Weatherspoon. So if anybody has any suggestions for her backlist that I should check out, let me know down below because I, I need more of this in my life. Next up, I have Chaos Theory by Nick Stone. This is the one that I gave 4.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Andy Criddle, who after a few mishaps in life, has turned to alcohol as his coping mechanism. He is drunk more often than not at a certain time of day, and then he meets Shelby, who seems to understand him more than anybody else. Shelby has avoided making friends at high school because she has been burned in the past, but something about Andy really calls to her. They become quick friends and soon become each other's shoulders to lean on when things get tough, and it's kind of their story. I flew through this book so quickly, the writing style is so easy, and these characters honestly feel like real people. It does cover some difficult topics like grief, mental health, addiction, alcoholism, self-harm, suicidal ideation, things like that. But it does it in a very honest and real way and does not shy away from these topics. I really liked both Andy and Shelby. They were just so raw and real. They were fully fleshed out, developed characters and they each had their difficulties that they were going through. I really liked the dual point of view and being able to see inside both of these characters' minds. I think that really helped propel the story forward. I really liked how the main focus of this story was mental health and the negative stigma surrounding it. I really liked how it looked at how it affects the individual struggling with it, but also those around them as well. The author note at the beginning of the story also goes over Nick Stone's own personal experience with mental health and the negative stigma around it, and I think that that was a great way to introduce the story and these characters to the reader. Shelby and Andy are so different from each other personality and lifestyle wise but I loved how much they understood each other and really worked together to deal with the issues that they were having. I highly recommend this on audiobook. I honestly think that the narrators did such an amazing job with the raw emotions that these characters were feeling. I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I definitely think that this is another one that everybody should check out as long as you're able able to read these topics without feeling triggered. Next up I have What the Neighbor Saw by Melissa Adelman. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Alexis and her husband Sam who move into a beautiful home that definitely needs a little bit of love to get it up and running. Things seem to be going well, they're meeting the neighbors, and then one of the neighbors, Teddy, is found dead on the shore. As Alexis begins to spend more time with the newly widowed Belair, she starts to discover some little secrets that are hidden behind closed doors. I listened to this one on audiobook and I became so invested in the dynamics between these neighbors. I'm a petty little bitch, so I loved all of the drama and gossip and betrayal in this. I will say that it did take a little bit of time to become fast-paced at the beginning. It's really laying down the dynamics between the neighbors and who doesn't like who but like pretends to like this person. It's a whole mess, but I was into it. This is told in dual point of view between Blair and Alexis, which I thought was an interesting way to tell this story. None of these characters are particularly likable, but I personally am a fan of that, so I ate it up. I will say that Sam is the worst type of man, and I would have kicked him to the curb so quickly if I was Alexis, but that's just me. I also didn't see the ending coming, which is always a bonus in thrillers for me because I'm usually pretty good at calling them. Overall, I had a lot of fun with this one. Definitely recommend the audiobook four out of five stars. Next up I have If You'll Love Me by Uni and I gave this one a four out of five stars. This is a graphic novel that follows a freshman in college named Momo who is very very shy. She ends up meeting a friend of a friend named PG and she gets an instant crush. PG is known for seducing the ladies and kind of being that player but as they spend more time together they start to realize that they like each other but then messages get crossed and, you know, some drama ensues. I really love this one. I really loved both Momo and PG. I think Momo was the sweetest little bean 
ever. She's one of those people that you wish you were friends with because she is just so nice. I also really liked PG and how they were very broody. They definitely played into the I hate everybody but you trope, which I'm a big fan of. This was definitely an opposites attract trope story. I really liked how they both worked through their insecurities together. There was a little bit of miscommunication at times, but that definitely helped bring them closer together in the end. I want more of these two. I think they're so cute. And I definitely recommend this graphic novel. It was super cute, sapphic. What more can you ask for? So four out of five stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for my June wrap up is the second book in This Poison Heart duology This Wicked Fate by Callan Bran and I gave this a four out of five stars. This story picks up right from where This Poison Heart leaves off. I think that I liked This Poison Heart a tiny tiny bit more than I liked this one but it was still a really fun conclusion to the story. I definitely wish that we were getting more from these characters because I really do love them. I love how effortlessly Greek myth is interwoven into this story. I'm a huge fan of Greek mythology, so that was something I really loved in the first book, and I think that it did an even better job in this one. I really love Brie as a main character. I think she is just so loyal and fierce and smart and funny. I loved learning more about her powers and how she got to utilize them more in this. I also really love her support system and those surrounding her. They are just so supportive of her and they really helped with her grief over what happened in the first book. I just love the banter between all these characters. I think they were all just so much fun to get to know more about. The biggest complaint about this that I have is the same complaint that I had about the first book, the romance. I just didn't like it. I didn't feel a connection between the two characters. I don't think they have any chemistry. I personally would have liked it a lot more if they were just really good friends, like a platonic thing, because I think that they're still able to have all the scenes that they had together without the random kissing and pining. It just didn't work for me. But I am glad that it didn't take over the main plot line of the story. I was definitely more interested in the other aspects of the book, so I did like that part. At this point, I'm going to read everything that this author writes. I think she's very talented and I enjoy her writing, so take that as you will. Four out of five stars, read this duology, but I am hoping that it becomes more than a duology. All right, everybody, so those were the final six books that I read out of the 12 for the month of June 2023. If you're interested in the first six, then check out part one of this wrap-up. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!